Okay, in this video, this is uh, going to show you how to build 2D people for Google SketchUp. And so I tried to look at how to do this on my own, and I had a little bit of trouble, but uh, compiling multiple uh, tutorials, I was able to figure it out, and so I thought I'd share my sort of streamlined way of doing it. So as you can see, I'm in Google SketchUp 8, and these are the 2D people. So this is a 2D person here. 2D, 2D. And right now I just have them to where they are stationary. They do not rotate their face with the camera. And we'll see how long this takes. I'm going to turn the shadows on. I'll pause the video. Okay, I've turned the shadows on. And you can see them coming off the 2D people. So we will use a combination of Photoshop and Google SketchUp. I'm also using a mouse and a Wacom bamboo tablet. So we will, these were already hand drawn um, on my tablet and I brought them into Photoshop and did some editing then I bring them into SketchUp and prepare them for the uh, set design that I've made. And as you can see I've put a couple, I have one one back here there in the, the background and in the foreground I have three characters here that they were 2D people as well. They're basically like cutouts. So let's get started. Let's go into Photoshop. And I have an image here of three women. I'm going to go ahead and just pick one of them. I'm going to pick one of them to um, do this tutorial with. So we'll start with the, the lady in the front here. And forgive me if you see a little bit of lag got a lot of stuff running so what I'm gonna do using Photoshop I'm gonna um, lasso her out and I'm gonna actually switch over to my Wacom so I'm just gonna kinda crudely cut her out of this image and then I will be creating a new image based off of this image that I've cut out okay we're gonna do a control C and control N to create a new document. I'll just leave it as the standard. And control V to paste it. So now I've got her into the new document. I'm going to zoom in just a bit. I press Z to zoom. I'm going to crop this a bit more. So I press M for the select tool. I know there's other ways to crop. This is just my old bad habit. So I'm just going to run through it real quick. I'm going to just select the outside spots that I do not want. It's good to get this cropped tightly because when you bring it into Google SketchUp um, you're going to want the shadow to begin at a certain spot so the tighter that you crop it the better. So I'm going to go to select. So we're going to go to select and let's inverse the selection. There it is. So now we've selected the inside of it and I know there's some short keys for this I can't remember <laughs> at the moment so I'm just gonna go ahead and crop it okay now I've cropped that image what I'm gonna do now I got rid of the selection that I had I'm gonna press W for the magic wand and I'm gonna just delete these uh, white areas and press M and just kill that selection now I'm just gonna see if I have any other areas that I need to get rid of I'll just, um, I don't think I need to do this, but I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it anyways. Okay, so we've gotten rid of everything there. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I want this to be a, J, a uh, PNG file. And I'm going to just call this one Worker1. <clears throat> Whoops, since I already have one. Sorry, I just jumped back into that. I'm going to actually save it. Let's just do Worker2. Just to make sure we don't have any problems with that. Since they already have a workers too. Yes, so I'm gonna try three. Okay, we're good. Save it. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna open up a new Google SketchUp.
Okay, here we go. Here's the um, basic screen, and I'm going to actually switch over to my mouse. I like to use my mouse in Google for most things. So I'm going to just uh, bring in our image, and we'll scale it to meet this, even though I know that's a little bit off from my from my other model. I'm just going to go ahead and do that to give you a reference. So now I've got my folder open off to the left here. You can't really see that in the camera. And I'm gonna grab the uh, the file, the JPEG or the PNG file that I created, and drag it on to here. Okay, and I just made it to where it's vertical. See how big that is. So we're gonna obviously have to scale that. First thing I'm gonna want to do, though, I'm gonna press the Q for the um, rotate button. I'm gonna see if I can get this rotated. wants to spin quite a bit so I'm gonna try to get this again pretty close okay gotten that pretty pretty close I think I can do it a little bit better I'm gonna go ahead and scale it first and then and then I will do that so let's just bring the size down a little bit I press the S key for scale and I'm gonna press the M key to move I'm just gonna kinda move it to the origin just so I know where that is and I'm gonna basically be eyeballing a lot of this press Q again and I'm gonna try and get this a little more accurate there we go oh. does not want to cooperate with me I just barely want to move it there we go now we have it right on the axis. I'm going to go ahead and press the S key again to scale it down some more. Try to get an idea of if someone were to stand up, would they be the height of this person back there? And I think that's pretty close. Okay. And I'll go ahead and delete her, get rid of her. And so now here comes the part to get this item ready. Now if you notice, I'm going to go ahead and turn the shadows on. It may not be set up to show the shadows as of yet. Cast shadows. There we go. It's a big square. So basically it's pulling the shadow from the whole entire box. And what we're going to want to do is basically cut this character out and then it'll show the cast the shadows properly. Okay, so I'm going to turn shadows off. And I typically like to um, explode. So I right clicked on the selected item and exploded it. It usually brings it in as a group. I like to manually create the group. so. I'm going to select it all. I just did a click and select all and make group. Okay. And then I want to go to edit group. <coughs> and once we're in the edit group, you can see we have the lines here, which is um, this is kind of the outline of the shadow that you would see. Okay. So now I'm going to switch back to my Wacom. And I like to use. Um, this kind of freehand draw tool and it's important to note that when we're drawing these and I'll give you an example we need to connect to this side and it's got to be on the side so I can't just draw a circle and delete that out immediately so I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about and then you'll kind of start to see what I mean now you can use the line tool as well but I, t I do like to use this tool that could be a little bit more free flowing with how I draw this. Try to get it as close as you can without 
going on to the image. That'll happen sometimes, but just try not to. Okay, you see it turned red, that means it connected. So now what I'm gonna do, I just press the pound button to get the selection key, and if you click in here, now see how that is separate from the rest of the item. This is all still connected as one. By drawing that line, I've separated it. So what I'm gonna do now is we can go ahead and delete this line and delete that line and you'll see what happens I'm gonna turn the shadows on and now that now you see it's casted a shadow with the cutout here so we're gonna go through and do the same thing for the rest of this image and finish it off and we'll do around the backpack And let's do between the legs here. Try not to make the lines um, touch as you go through. Okay, press pound. I'm going to go ahead and start deleting some of these lines. Delete, 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 and delete. I'm going to zoom in. Alt, oops. Okay, let's try it again. Zoom. And if I have my mouse, I can just use the roll ball. Uh, in fact, I may just switch over to that.